in less than five seconds, you can weigh and identify your foods with the highest degree of accuracy. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Coming Clean Podcast. This is your host, Peter O. Estevez. Thank you for being here for episode number 72 with none other than Anthony Ortiz. Anthony Ortiz is a founder and CEO of Fitly, a two-time digital health award winner and holds multiple patents. Anthony has been featured in many major publications worldwide, including the Shark Tank, Forbes, Good Morning America, and many, many, many others. He is a creator of SmartPlate, the world's fastest and easiest and the most accurate food tracker ever invented. Anthony believes in the power of AI and nutrition will assist in preventing and even reversing lifestyle-related diseases. Tony Robbins is a major shareholder, partner, and investor in SmartPlate, and together they are in a mission to bring awareness into every kitchen across the world. Hello, Anthony, and welcome to Coming Clean Podcast. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for that intro, Peter. I'm honored. Thank you so much. I'm excited to do this with you. I've seen all the excellent interviews that you've done, and I'm just like, I was shocked that you asked me to interview. I don't do this much, so uh, so I hope that I, I'm going to give your audience and you uh, just a little bit of the story they want to hear. Well, you, you know, you know, one of the things that that we are a purpose-driven podcast, right? And what I tried to do, we pivoted during the um, the midst of um, of COVID, and we decided that what we wanted to bring is true value to our community, to our audience, and be able to bring top leaders from across the world that are making an impact in the world, that are making a difference, and that are making a difference in, in people's lives and in, in, in our lifestyles and in things that we do to be able to break cycles that we have inherited from multiple generations and embrace and introduce new ideas, new ways of behaviors, new ways of thinking into our life. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I felt that you're an incredible, incredible candidate to be a podcast, uh, to be a guest on our podcast. And so thank you for, for agreeing to my invitation. Tell us exactly what is a smart plate. I know what it is and it sounds nice, but what is it and where was that idea born? So a few years ago, I almost lost my dad to the number one killer in the world, heart disease, caused by what we know today the num- is the number one problem in healthcare, which is what we are eating. And so, you know, when I, when I saw my dad, who is a three-time entrepreneur, he's a 6'4", burly man, 240 pounds, you know, on the, almost on his deathbed, you know, after this surgery, he wasn't going to make it. It was a, it's a very risky surgery. So I'm sitting in the lobby and I'm praying and I had this book in my hand. And when I was done praying, I opened the book up and the line that I read, I kid you not, it said, no one ever has to die from heart disease or stroke. It is a man made disease. And I'm paraphrasing, but this was a book written by Dr. T. Colin Campbell called the China study, who I'd been, I'd been researching, right? About how Asian cultures uh, eat and how they don't suffer from lifestyle related diseases as in the Western culture. And so when I read that, I thought, gosh, I realized how uneducated I was, that I thought this was inherent. I thought these things were genetic. So if my dad has heart disease and diabetes and prediabetes, I most likely am going to have it. I'm, I'm, I'm likely to have it. And that's such a, a, a faulty notion. And I realized if I'm uneducated in this space, and, I, and I've always been pretty much in uh, since my mid twenties in shape, I had a lot of bro science behind me and, uh, and I didn't know this. I, I just thought millions of Americans and children today do not know this information. So nutritional awareness became the mission that I wanted to step on. And when I say mission, it was like this, it was, a, it was definitely a message that I felt came from somewhere greater than myself. And I have been since that, since that point, I knew that I needed to focus at not create a band-aid, not create uh, something that will maintain your thing, your medicine, you know, not to say there's anything wrong with these things, but I wanted to focus at the core. And so Smart Plate is the world's first accurate, easiest and fastest food uh, uh, technology that combines artificial intelligence with elegant hardware. And in less than five seconds, you can weigh and identify your foods with the highest degree of accuracy. So essentially, you put your food, 
protein, carbs, and fats in three different sections or any kind of arrangement that you want. Then you take one picture from the top and in less than five seconds, you have all the micros and macros. And what that is, is just your carbs, proteins, fats, your vitamins and minerals, sodium, fiber, uh, sugar, and, um, and there's nothing more precise out there. And so the problem that we realize is that if people just had this nutritional awareness uh, and they would understand their portions, portions has a lot to do with it. My father used to eat from, we cooked everything from scratch. He ate healthy foods. He ate avocado. He ate brown rice. He ate a salad every day. So how in the world did a man who ate mostly foods from scratch, cooked from scratch, whole foods, right? Right. End up having heart disease almost, right? And so what that tells me is that avocados are healthy, but you should not have three of them a day, right? Olive oil can be healthy. You should not put olive oil in, and in the Latin culture, by the way, I live here in Puerto Rico, they put olive oil and oil on things like it is, it's going out of style. So what I'm realizing is, you know, that the portions and the arrangements of these foods play a hugely important role. Uh, as well as obviously eliminating the processed food. So that's, that's how the genesis of Smart Plate came about. Wow, what an incredible story. And you're right, you know, the Western culture um, and primarily the Latin culture, the Hispanic culture, we have been plagued with diabetes, heart attacks, um, overweight, uh, multiple, multiple diseases that we have basically surrendered, surrendered to. We have accepted them as being part of the culture, okay? Uh, and we, you know, we, we were made believe that it was part of our DNA. However, if we make up our inner biology, if we reverse that, we are able to reverse a lot of those, uh, a lot of those uh, conditions or, or medical conditions. So uh, your father uh, inspired you to create Smart Play, okay? And you were actually feature, not you, but... Uh, Somebody else was featured in representation of Smart Plate on Shark Tank. And yes. uh, two questions, two questions. Uh, the technology sounds incredible. It, it really does. I can see where there would be some culture barriers, particularly in the Hispanic market and on, on the older cultures, you know, being able to take a picture of, the, uh, of, of, of your food. And, you know, when people want to sit down to eat, okay, they want to sit down to eat. They don't want to. You know, they don't want to count the calories in, right? Um, Not anymore. I would say a lot of people now, they sit down to eat. The, the trend is they're taking pictures, especially our demographic. A lot of our cost customers are women, and they take pictures of their food. They're putting it on Instagram, Pinterest. So you're seeing this, like, it, it is changing. People are taking pictures of their food just to say, hey, here's me having a nice night out, and I'm having this for dessert and this for breakfast. And so we're creating a way for them to go out to a restaurant, take a picture of their food, post it on, and at the same time that they're tracking what they're eating, they can then post it to Pinterest, post it to Instagram as well, and still share it with their family and friends. Okay, so, so, so do me a favor. Let me back up again, uh, just to clarify. Sure. You take the picture, yeah. and what happens? Okay, so, so the way that the product works, it captures the customer journey everywhere they are. So we don't always eat at home. We go out to restaurants. Right. We go for brunch with our significant others. We are at a hotel when we're traveling and we order food service in. We eat at the workplace. We take food to the workplace, right? So we created a platform for coaches to hold their clients accountable uh, and see where they're at, where they at on that journey, where they're at in that journey. So for example, if you're eating at home, you can use the device and it's right here, right? So you can use the three, the three trays and it has the three weight sensors right ah. underneath each, each of the trays so you weigh three separate foods at once so when you're home this this should be like sits it should sit next to your Nutribullet or okay. something right so now you can do your shape you can also do your your food and also now let's say you go to a restaurant we don't expect you to take you don't take your Nutribullet with you when you go out right you order a juice at a restaurant so for us you can order your food same thing you on the app you can hit the plus symbol and use the camera icon and just take a picture, we can identify up to five, seven things at once that you've eaten. As long as it's in the picture, Smart Plate will see it. And if you had, let's say, for example, hash browns, avocado, poached eggs for brunch or something, you can select it. And within seconds, you've got a good average of what you've eaten at that restaurant. 
We also have over a million barcodes. You know, a lot of us today are on the move. We eat things that come out of a box, bag, or can. We can barcode scan over a million products. You, we have a database of over 1.5 million foods as well. So you can do a search for it, right? So it's, and it also comes with a portable lid. So if you were to do your measurement and then use the lid, right? You can now take this to your job and you've already done your measurements. This serves as your Tupperware, right? So again, we designed something that can capture the customer journey at home, on the go, at the workplace, and when you're traveling. And actually, the journey will help you do an accumulation of how to act or subtract your calories, right? Accordingly. So if, yes. if, if for some reason you eat more portions because you're out and you didn't have, you're able to take that tracking and reduce it into your next meal, right? right yes, 100%. So you, you set your macros. If you want to go in the advanced uh, program, you can set your macros. We have a weight management program where you can lose weight, maintain weight. Uh, gain weight, some people want to gain muscle, right? And we actually don't say lose weight, we actually say lose fat because we want to demystify that. We don't want anyone to lose weight. Losing weight means you're also going to lose muscle and we don't want you to lose that. So the, the, the proper term for us is really, it's, it's lose fat. We want you to gain muscle, right? And so, um, you know, so when you use any of these programs, as you alluded to, counting your macros is the proper way. So you're constantly tracking your protein, carbs, and fats Smart plate is really cool because there's nothing out there, Peter, that tells you at the point of consumption before you do something wrong. So if you're about to eat more carbs, right? And this is super, super interesting for anybody counting their macros by meal, or if you're a pre-diabetic or diabetic, and you're trying to go type one diabetic, you're trying to count your carbs at that point in time, the light will flash. It'll tell you in what section uh, the, the, the carbs are in and how many tablespoons you need to remove to hit the precise carbs before you consume that meal. So, let, know let, yeah. so how important is that in today's society? How important is it to be able to change your culture? And, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to go a little bit into my culture, the Hispanic culture. You know, I'm used to eating heavy, you know, the rice, the beans, the meats, the salads, you know, large portions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how how is the younger generation seeing that? Are they adapting accordingly? Are they receiving this? And you're exactly right. Even 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 after I I uh, think about it, you know, today you can't go to a restaurant without using your camera. You got to use your camera to pull out the menu. Yes, that's true. Exactly, exactly. Yes, you got so, it. So got I, it. I I I can see how this would be an incredible opportunity to be able to revol revolutionize the entire. Uh, even the food categories, right? Even even to be able to revolutionize and, and, and be able to track everything that we do and everything that we eat. So how is the younger generation welcoming this? How are they, how, how, who is your target audience? Who are you reaching? Yes, that's a great point. So I'll, to, to the restaurant piece, I'll tell you this, we have over 90% of all major US restaurant chains already in our database. So Peter, if you go into a restaurant and we know that you've got 400 calories left, and, and only uh, you know, 40 grams of carbs, we're gonna be able to tell you the meal that you can have at that point in time at that restaurant, right? Tapping into that database. So it's, it's, it'll tell you here are the meals that you can have that fits your, your remaining caloric budget and carb or macronutrient budget, right? So to your second question, how do we target, our main audience are predominantly women between the ages of 28 and 65. Uh, that's 70 to 80 percent, but we're seeing more men coming into this and saying, look, we want to count our macros. They're bodybuilders. They're working out. We have a lot of athletes. So we have pro and, and teen athletes, uh, student athletes that are looking at this because they're realizing that the current solutions that exist are off on average by 40 percent. So elite coaches are telling their athletes to use these apps that are 40% erroneous on average and can be as high as off by 70%. So this is a game changer for them. So we're seeing, we're seeing three verticals here. Elite coaches or coaches and their athletes, we're seeing practitioners and their clients, a practitioner like a, like a personal trainer, a gym owner, a registered dietitian. And then we're seeing clinicians and patients. We're seeing doctors uh, that, uh, uh, 
naturopaths are coming to us. We've signed on like 20 of these guys just in the last week alone. And they're, they're coming to us because they have, a, a, they have patients who have diabetes, uh, they need to lose weight, they're obese, um, and they need an accountability tool. Because what happens is every one of these practitioners, coaches, RDs, doctors, when they tell their client what to do, the client goes home, uses one of these apps. They don't, they're 40% wrong on average. Client or patient doesn't see the results and they go back. So this is a game changer. I wish you, would, you were on the webinar when we signed on about 20 coaches yesterday alone, right? And when I said, all right, who's in? After I gave them the demo, they were just like, you know, two hands up because it is a game changer. It's the accountability tool that's missing in this uh, in the space that we're tapping into. Now, let me ask you a question. Somebody like the American Heart Association, somebody like the Diabetic, Diabetic Association, those groups, those medical groups that have, that see the problems in, in our communities firsthand, how are they embracing your product? That is so strange, but not surprised that you mentioned those two organizations. Here's why. We won the research award that was given to us by the American Heart Association in 2017. The American Diabetes Association recently published our chief medical advisor study on how we were able to reverse pre-diabetes and early onset type 2 with a portion control diet. And the ADA, th this was such an impressive study that we did that the ADA brought Dr. Daniel Joss, our chief medical advisor, to present this study orally. Oral presentations for the American Diabetes Association are reserved for the projects of most merit. Most researchers, when they do something groundbreaking, they submit it, they don't get invited to present it orally. So it was an incredible honor, but, but very strange that you mentioned of all the associations, those two in particular have already recognized our work. Well, and I mentioned those two because I think those are the most, uh, yes. those are the two leading uh, killers in, 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 in our communities more particularly in, in, the, in, in the Latinx community. I mean, I, those are the most prevalent diseases. Uh, now, Anthony, how is it that we dismiss the myth between AI and nutrition? I mean, it's almost, mm -hmm. you know, there's, 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 there, there is this perception that AI is more in the robotic uh, in space, more in the uh, uh, automation space, but nutrition? Yeah, I, I can tell you what, what's so beautiful about it. So first of all, artificial intelligence, as you alluded to, it's actually pretty broad. So you have robotics, you have machine vision, computer vision, machine learning, then on a subset of machine learning is deep learning. So it's pretty broad area. We focus on the sub on machine learning and deep learning and computer vision because we take face recognition technology, which is similar to what we use, and we apply it to food, right? And then we feed it a ton of data. We have our own neural network. It's all our proprietary technology. And it's the number one most accurate food classifier uh, in the world. Um, and so when we use AI, not only to identify foods, right? We also, so that, that immediately takes away, you know, the job of, of a registered dietitian having to identify or the individual having to identify it and punch it in manually it immediately recognizes what you're eating on your food. You know, it's, it's within seconds, right? And then the other thing is in terms of automation, you know, the, the machine learning and AI can find all of these correlations. I'll give you an example. What, what are the implications of what we eat, when we eat, how much we eat, and how well we sleep, right? These are, these are things that a, that a machine learning algorithm can start to find in the data and start to predict and I can even eventually, we, we believe that we're going to be able to do some incredible predictions on whether you are susceptible to having a heart attack or not based on the patterns, right? So pattern recognition could, could be huge in this space. So we're looking at all of those things. From a coach perspective, we're looking at, we're, we're looking to increase a coach's client base through AI because we can automate a lot of the rigorous work that they do, planning meal plans answering the same questions over and over again for their clients. And they get the same questions over and over. What should I have for dinner tonight? How many calories are in this? All of that can be automated. And we're using AI to, to change that. And so if you're a coach or a practitioner, right, I've got this machine that can automate 70, 80% of what you're doing. So you can grow your client base from 100 to 300 to 500. 
And that's why these coaches were so excited last night, because when they saw the demo that we gave them, they were just like, sign me up, right? And it, it is it is game changing. And that's that, that I'm showing you a couple of pieces of the platform. Uh, there's a few more things coming as well. So we're super excited. Wow, that's incredible. You're a young man. And you, you're you a very accomplished young man. Uh, 10 plus patents that you have been working on. Uh, partner with Tony Robbins. Uh, now, you were not able to land the Shark Tank, but you landed Tony Robbins. How did that happen? You know, that's a great question. I, I don't get asked it a lot. Um, but when we went on Shark Tank, we were early. We were pre-product, pre-revenue, pre-everything. And they, we had just launched on Kickstarter with a rudimentary prototype that I had spent $20,000 on. I had this idea and I said, you know what, if this works, this could be game changing, but let me just put 20 grand into this prototype. I wanna test the hypothesis, right? And that's, I'm kind of a, a, a research enthusiast, if you will, but not by any means a researcher. Um, and so I said, you know what, I, I wanna prove myself. I always try to prove myself wrong in my hypothesis, not right. So I said, let, let's see if, if no one will buy this, not if who will buy it. So I, I spent 20 grand, I posted it on, on Kickstarter. And sure enough, we did $111,000 in less than 30 days. That's a pretty nice return sure, for 20,000. And so, um, and probably came out to like 25K when I think about the team time and you know the, the PR firm that we hired, which was a few thousand dollars, nothing too crazy. And and then, uh, you know, when I saw that, that the interest was there, that propelled me to keep going. And within two weeks within that Kickstarter launch, we were featured everywhere because it was such a revolutionary idea, right? And, and still is. And so the, the, the producers of Shark Tank got a hold of me. And on two separate, we couldn't respond to them on the week, on the first week that they reached out. The second week, they reached out again and said, hey, this is Shark Tank. You guys want to come on the show? I said, okay, well, it's their second email. We better get back to these guys. But we were busy with the pre-orders, right? And so we get back to them and we said, look, I watch the show faithfully and avidly every Friday. I know that no one's going to invest in us because we're pre-product, pre-revenue. And they said, look, our audience is your target audience. At the very least, come on the show. You know, if you don't get funding. So they kind of just, they really wanted us to go on the show and we said, you know what, at the very least, it'll be great brand marketing. And, and, and we knew that our chances were nil to none because we, we didn't have those three uh, prototypes that you saw in Shark Tank were aesthetic prototypes. Okay. And, and the idea was slightly different too. The product is a little different. So anyway, but we look forward to having a comeback and uh, I sent my CMO at the time because uh, for, for different reasons. I had Jackie Joyner Kersey who was gonna join us, a six time Olympic medalist. But uh, you know, Shark Tank, uh, Shark Tank's agreements at the time, I think were a little, uh, you know, not, not, she wasn't so comfortable with them and neither was I. So we decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's let someone else go on the show and, and do a better job than we would anyway, so. Well, yeah. I, I think you could have picked a better part, uh, better part than Tony Robbins because he has such a tremendous passion for not only feeding the hungry across the world, yeah. you know, through yep. many of his philanthropic efforts, he's an in, incredible human being, a, a compassionate yeah. individual, and and you couldn't have picked a better partner. So yeah. let's let's pivot a little bit in our conversation. Let's talk about the state of affairs in the world. You and I met through Clubhouse, okay, yeah. uh, a new platform, uh, and uh, I want to talk about social media and the impact it's having not only in your business, in your personal life, but across the world, okay? And the importance of it. How important is this type of, of relationship building, uh, which for me, for me, I'm much older than you are, right? So for my generation, I, I'm always having to reinvent myself and become part of to something that you are, you know, part in, right? So how important is it for, for, for bridging uh, relationships and, and, and growing businesses? I mean, I think it's super important, but, but Peter, I'm, I'm with you, actually. I'm kind of a social introvert, so social media is not my thing, and I kind of cringe when I'm like, oh, I got to make a post, or I've got to have my face, or I've got to do my hair to look a certain way for social media, and I've got to, you know, and, and to me, it's like, so we met on Clubhouse. I haven't been more excited, and I, I'm not paid, so for your audience here, I don't know the owners or the founders of Clubhouse. Uh, I haven't been more excited about a platform since the internet came out. 
And this is just for me. I am a voice person. I'm a phone guy. Uh, I prefer that because I don't have to put up a front on how I look and how I, you know, as a picture and what I say. But, but so when Clubhouse is a platform, for those of you who don't know, where it's kind of like a live podcast meets the show The Voice, you know, where you can truly see these professionals and, and normal folks and you can hear the talent, you can hear the, the, the wisdom that they have to offer, and you can get a, sen a better sense through their voice. So it's a voice medium that, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's just a better fit in terms of social media. So, um, so I, I love where that's going. I know I need to do, personally, we need to do more TikTok. And we, we just literally did our TikTok account, like we opened it up like two days ago. So I'm probably not the person to ask about social media, but the importance of it 100%. Absolutely. I mean, look, the 20 coaches, 30, 20 coaches that we're signing on weekly are coming from IG, Instagram, and Clubhouse. That's it. And I know we're going to crush it even more when we start to do TikTok and YouTube videos, which we don't even have yet. So, yeah. Well, and, and the, re the reason I bring up questions like this is because, you know, we're in a different world. This is this type of conversations we're not had 20 years ago, 30 years ago, right? Yeah. So it, it, I think when we integrate ourselves into technology, we have to dive into what's out there and the mediums and communications that are available through get our messages across. I would have never had an opportunity to perhaps have this dialogue with you had I not had the encounter with you on on um, on Clubhouse. So I really, yeah. the, the relevance of that, I think for me is incredible, you know, because I have been able to be in rooms with Manny Fernandez, the Silicon Valley, you know, angel investor with, uh, it, you know, uh, Kevin Harrington from Charting with, with uh, uh, Grant Cardone and many other incredible personalities that are making an impact in the world. And I think a lot of times our cultures, our generations minimize the importance of certain things. And to me, it, it, to me and to your point exactly, you know, Clubhouse is one of those, you can't filter wisdom, knowledge, experience. You can't filter that. Yes. You know, you either exactly. have it or you don't have it. You know, I may be able yes. to look younger in, 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 in my Instagram picture, in my Facebook picture. I may be able to do a photo up in front of somebody else's car and pretend it's mine. I may be able to do a lot of other stuff that I can't do in Clubhouse because either I have the wisdom, the knowledge, the experience, and there's nothing wrong if you don't have any of that because it's also a platform where you can learn from others. When you can sit in and take it, I, I a lot of times show up in a room, I mute my mic and I just become a listener, you know, because for me it's an opportunity to still learn. Like if I walked into a lecture room at, at the university, right? So I, that's how I take it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love that it's democratizing wisdom, equalizing the playing field, especially for minority entrepreneurs, Latinx, Black, African Americans who didn't have access to this information. It is a 24 seven hour conference of some of the smartest people who have to be there because they know where this is going and they're doing it, they're serving, you know, serving a community with their knowledge, with their wisdom. I know some people are waiting to monetize it. So they're building a huge following for that reason. But there's a lot of us there that are that are enjoying both giving and receiving, you know, and I, 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 I follow I, that Robin's mentality. I, I, which is I, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. I do it. You know, I don't monetize my podcast. You know, my, uh, you know, my background is in the uh, oil and gas energy sector, you know, uh, I do this as a mission of philanthropy, as a mission of service. You know, they may come a, a time where we choose to, in order to be able to greater service to other people and to reach more people, that we may choose to monetize that by, by, by introducing pro, uh, products or courses or books or whatever is available at, at, yeah. you know, at that particular point. But today for us is a medium of information to be able to break cycles of dysfunction that we have inherited for many, many, many years, you know, you talked about it with your father, your father's health, okay, his, uh, his, his heart condition gave you an opportunity to potentially save millions of lives across the world. What an incredible opportunity. What an incredible way to be able to use, uh, you know, we often say uh, in recovery, because I come from a, from a recovery background, uh, make your mess uh, be your message, right? So you made something that could have been a potential mess, a message and a transformational message 
for, for many in humanity. Tell us where can people find the product and where can people find Anthony Ortiz? Yeah, absolutely. So on IG, you can find us at, you'll find the product at SmartPlate. Uh, you can go to our website at getsmartplate.com. Again, that is getsmartplate.com. And if you are on Peter's podcast, he didn't ask me to do this, but I am going to do this. So if you want to order one of our products, if you think it could be helpful to you or someone else, uh, use the code Peter and get $50 off on our website. Again, that's getsmartplate.com. And you can follow me on IG at smartplateceo. Again, that's smartplateceo on Instagram. So, thank Anthony you. Anthony Ortiz, an incredible human being, smart guy. I look forward to more encounters with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for all the help and, and, and contribution that you're giving on Clubhouse, on your platform. Just truly amazing work. So I look forward. And I'm, if you ever need me to come on the show as a guest or help you and serve you in any way on your mission, I'm here, brother. So thank you. Thank you so much.